Greetings, beloved one. What a life we have, inspired by love, sustained by the love of God. Yes, today I'd like to talk to you about the difference between trying to survive in this world versus thriving in God's love, thriving in intuition, thriving in inner guidance. Because really that's the difference between just trying to survive as a body on the timeline of time and space versus soaring, soaring into state of mind that is transcendent of this world. It's like dropping into the present moment deeper and deeper and deeper into a place of perfect safety, perfect care, perfect security. And to do this you have to let go of this striving to survive as a body. If you surrender and yield into divine guidance, you will be carried along so gently, so easily, so softly, and what you experience as your life in this world will feel more like a magic carpet ride. As the song says, a whole new world, a new fantastic point of view. You will be carried along, you will have synchronicities, you will have miracles, you have a sense of divine flow, and you are that flow. And everything around you witnesses to this beautiful divine flow. What is gone is all sense of the past, all rules and laws of the past, all sense of limitation, all belief in lack. You are no longer bound by the laws of economics, the laws of reciprocity, the laws of I'll do this for you if you do this for me the laws of exchange. All of the symbols of the world are just given softly as reflections and reminders of the presence of spirit. All is well. All is good. Right-minded seeing can see only perfection. So this state of care, of the care of love, radiates to everything and everyone. And that's where you see all things working together for good. That's where you see that there are no exceptions to this divine law, that this divine law is for everything and everyone. And the only thing you have to let go of to experience this divine flow is the sense of the past. See no past in anyone, see no past in anything. Come with this new moment, a fresh, clear, sparkling perspective that is untouched by the past. This is what convinces you of the divine law of love. As you give, you receive, and as you abundantly give from your heart, you receive the reflections of that love everywhere that you look, without exception. So this is so precious, and if I could share anything with you, it would be that when I had the experience many, many years ago, back in the the mid-1980s of just 
surrendering over my life, everything I perceived about myself, to the care and love and will of God, then things changed. Things turned around. You might say that the convincing job, the Holy Spirit convincing my mind of its divinity, began in earnest. When I began really listening to Jesus, following his instructions, following his guidance, his, his prompts, then a whole new world opened up. And that is a journey that you have to experience it for yourself. You may read about experiences that others have had in a book, and you can learn from these, these transcendent experiences. But the kind of experience I'm talking about, the development of this trust, and the strength of this trust, where you know you are perfectly cared for in any seeming situation, this comes about from listening to your guidance, the higher power, the intuition, the Holy Spirit, Jesus. Call it whatever you want, but when you tune in to this guidance, then you're guided about what to say, what to do, where to go. Everything is given when you surrender to this guidance. And this rinses the mind of the past and all past associations. So it's as if you come with empty hands unto your God, you come with a, a beautiful open mind of show me, convince me, I will step back and let you lead the way. This is the humbleness that opens the way to the spiritual journey. And so, you might say that everything of this world, all the symbols of this world, are then used to convince you that you are whole, that you are complete. It's to convince you of the wholeness of your heart, the wholeness of your mind, the all-encompassing nature of, of divine presence. This is the purpose of everything, just to convince you that you are one with the presence of love, with the presence of God. Over the years, it's just been everything I believed I needed was provided effortlessly, not by past learning, not by education, not by reciprocity, working for things, doing things for people, uh, to earn money, or earn respect, or earn survival of the body. Not by any of that, but, but by this willingness to open to inner guidance and to follow that inner guidance, without exception. So, for me, A Course in Miracles came into my experience in 1986, in the summer of 1986, the late summer, and that began a, a process of immersion, where I just was immersing in the teachings, basically using the book as an oracle, and then praying, and letting questions, concerns arise, and having the prayer of my heart answered by popping open the book, seemingly randomly, to passages that, that answered my questions, that comforted my soul, that was like a healing balm to the the conflicted mind that I was experiencing. And then through following the guidance, everything that I seemed to need was provided. The effortless quality of this was important as well. It's like the, the paragraph in the Course called The Promise, which says, once you have accepted His plan as the one function you would fulfill, 
There will be nothing else the Holy Spirit will not arrange for you without your efforts. He will go before you, making straight your way and leaving in your way no stones to trip on and no obstacles to bar your way. Nothing you need will be denied you. Not one seeming difficulty, but will melt away before you reach it. You need take thought for nothing except the only purpose you would fulfill. So when I embrace the purpose of saying, Lord, make me an instrument, just use me, guide me, lead me, may, me, may I be of service to the whole universe, may my life, my thoughts, my words, my emotions, my actions, may everything that I know of me be used as a song of gratitude for you and for the Creator. Guide me, guide me, show me. And then the experience was is that as I began traveling without any affiliation to any organization or church, without any savings in the bank, without any worldly means of support, just going out and, and going on the road with a spirit of trust, a trust in Jesus and the Holy Spirit to guide me, to show me, to take care of me. Yeah, I just allowed myself to, to feel the promises of the Spirit fulfilled in my daily life, my daily experiences. And so this has gone on, uh, the, the first travels really kind of on a broad scale, uh, taking off for five and a half weeks across uh, the United States and up through Canada and back down to Midwestern United States. That first five and a half week trip back in 1991 was kind of my kickoff experience into kind of uh, doing a bit of walkabout and driveabout in the United States and Canada and being taken in by many people that I had never met, uh, just taken in place after place, town after town, uh, really not staying even in motels, just just welcomed in to people's homes. And uh, one night staying in Oklahoma in a campground, but basically mostly taken into people's homes and just having these beautiful holy encounters wherever I would go. The quality of that learning experience was one of trusting and one, it was like a magic carpet ride and it was very important to me to have that experience because it set the rest of my life's mission and purpose, it set it in motion and it carried me and carried me and the encounters with people I had never met were just amazing. Day after day after day, week after week, month after month, and it has gone on year after year and decade after decade. So it's like, it's a whole new perspective, but it's a perspective that is as you might say, it's it feels endless. It just goes on and on and on and on. And the love begins to flow in me, through me, around me, all around me. And that's what has made really all the difference. It's made all the difference. And so, to the world, this can seem quite crazy because the world is just based on time, on past and present and future. It's like Jesus says in the Course, when you look for continuity in linear time, you're trying to force continuity on the past and present and the future. The continuity, Jesus tells us, can be found in the moment, in the holy instant. If you stay fully present and you let go of all past references and past associations, if you let go of all concerns and worries about the future, all future planning, and you give it all over 
to the spirit, the spirit will take you more and more into the gateway of the present moment, which is the gateway to eternity or to the kingdom of heaven. And how amazing this journey is to know that you can drop in and become so present that all that remains is God's Divine Presence. That the world in mystical experiences, certainly for me, has disappeared. It has vanished from awareness as I gave way to the light. As I totally opened up to the light, the entire linear perceptual world completely vanished. And uh, Jesus calls this revelation. And it's like you get a glimpse of, of, of what's real and true. You get a glimpse of reality in Revelation. And then when you seem to come back to perception, yeah, it's nothing is quite the same. Everything looks a little more surreal. <laughs> it, looks, it looks lighter, it looks brighter. You know it's not your home. This world is not home to the Holy Child of God. The home is eternity, and time is, uh, you might say, an alien experience. So everyone who walks this world perceiving themselves as a body is perceiving themselves as, a, as an alien, walking alone and separate from other beings, and uh, at times uh, sad or depressed, frustrated, angry. Yeah, that's just the alternative. If you be not who you are as God created you, then that's a world of time and space. And and the prayer of the heart is, show me the world in a whole new way. Show me the world of innocence, of just cleansed of all past associations and future plans. So I'm just so grateful to be able to share this experience from my heart. I'm so grateful to be able to extend this, to meet you along the way, to meet you really in my mind. We're all in the mind. We have not gone out, we have not left our our divine mind and our divine experience and and the principle of our connectedness remains just perfect as always. It has not been changed. It has not been violated. We remain unified and we remain one as God created the Holy Child of God One. One of the lessons from the workbook of A Course in Miracles that really captures and reflects everything that I'm talking about right now is a workbook lesson number 50 and it's I am sustained by the love of God and to me this this basically it just gives the gift of giving as a, a an experience basically it's the total permission coming from the spirit to let go of everything perceived as as needed or wanted in this world and allowing the love of God to shine through you, to express through you, extend through you and feeling the care and the sustenance of, of that beautiful divine love. So the title is I Am Sustained by the love of God, and I will share this with you now. It has touched my heart in the most profound and deep way. Here is the answer to every problem that will confront you today and tomorrow and throughout time. In this world, you believe you are sustained by everything but God. Your faith is placed in the most trivial and insane symbols, pills, money, quote, protective clothing, influence, prestige, being liked, knowing the right people, 
and an endless list of forms of nothingness that you endow with magical powers. All these things are your replacements for the love of God. All these things are cherished to ensure a body identification. They are songs of praise to the ego. Do not put your faith in the worthless. It will not sustain you. Only the love of God will protect you in all circumstances. It will lift you out of every trial and raise you high above all the perceived dangers of the world into a climate of perfect peace and safety. It will transport you into a state of mind that nothing can threaten, nothing can disturb, and where nothing can intrude upon the eternal calm of the Son of God. Put not your faith in illusions. They will fail you. Put all your faith in the love of God within you, eternal, changeless, and forever unfailing. This is the answer to whatever confronts you today. Through the love of God within you, you can resolve all seeming difficulties without effort and ensure confidence. Tell yourself this often today. It is a declaration of release from belief in idols. It is your acknowledgement of the truth about yourself. And so, it points us to the goal of faith, and, and that is the, putting our faith in and putting our trust in God is where we have our being. We have our very life in trusting and following the guidance of Jesus and the Holy Spirit. And it does imply that we must pull our faith away from the ego, pull it away from the past, pull it away from the goals that are set for the future. Because there are no past regrets, there are no past memories that still serve us in this holy instant. And there are no future goals or ambition that serve us. It's, it's really a, a willingness to let go of all thoughts of the past and all thoughts of the future. To be fully, fully present. That is the release. That is how we are sustained. That is how we know our life, our eternal life in the Kingdom of Heaven. The Kingdom of Heaven is at hand. It's very, very close. And we are to experience this by allowing forgiveness to flow over our mind like a blanket of protection and surety. And to, to let no idle and foolish thoughts enter our holy mind. Because peace is our natural state of mind. So, it's possible just to go forward, go forth in this state of mind, letting this state of mind lead the way. And that's how we merge with the state of mind, by putting the priority, putting the prominence on this peace, this inner peace, and letting no idle dreams, no foolish time thoughts come to disturb our rest. And we go forth in gladness and in gratitude, we go forth in happiness, we go forth to let our light shine to all the world, and this is how we keep the light in our awareness, by giving it away. This is our gift of giving. This is our most practical tool for remembering our very identity, to remembering who we truly are. So I send you blessings, I send you all of my happiness, I am with you, 
we go together and we cannot fail in this experience of remembering God and the love of God. Blessings abound. Amen.